Alright, this is John Color with OKRaw.com to have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, what I'm gonna do with you guys is actually show you guys my produce haul and plant haul and all the cool things I got when I was actually in Southern California this trip. Now I want to encourage you guys to check some of the links down below to find out how I actually shop the wholesale produce terminal in Los Angeles. It's really fun, it's really easy. I was up today this morning at uh, 4.30 a.m. and then basically got there by 5 a.m. walking the terminal. I think I left there approximately 8 a.m. so I was there a total of three hours. I got cases and cases and cases of amazing, mostly organic produce that I'm going to show you guys in this episode. But before I do, I'm going to show you guys actually how I pack the car. Some people think I'm crazy for packing the car like this much. And this trip was a little bit special. I don't know if you guys saw on my Facebook page that actually my parents were going to euthanize their dog because they couldn't take care of it. Long story short, um, I was able to find Luca a home. So my sister-in-law drove down from San Francisco to Los Angeles with the dog. I loaded up with the car with all the produce, all my plants, and left room for the dog, <laughs> which I don't normally have to account for. And then we drove back. And uh, now we're gonna unpack and show you guys actually how I packed everything in so crazily. All right, let's go ahead and open the trunk up. So that's the trunk, right? Over here we got my cooler. It plugs in so it keeps all my sugar cane juice cold from Dr. Jolly Sugar Cane. Check the link down below for that. Um, I got like case of organic kiwi, case of organic carrot, uh, tomatoes, case of, case of uh, organic uh, yellow squash. I got about 50 pounds of uh, uh, purple carrots in here, my backpack, some things for the dog, more dog food. Uh, got a bunch of mangoes. But uh, let me go ahead, oh, and then my plants are up top there, shoved in. But let me go ahead and open each of the doors to show you guys actually how well this is packed. All right, let's go ahead and walk around to the uh, driver's side rear door, and hopefully nothing falls out here. But this is how it is, right? So you got plants on the top, that's eggplants and tomatoes. Below them, actually, is just a flat of uh, like, uh, it says peppers, but actually down in there, I got like some oranges, coconuts, and uh, black tomatoes. And then below that, it says cucumbers, but in this uh, flat, actually, I don't know if you guys could see inside there, I got a whole case of uh, blood oranges. And then below that, I have a box. This actually has beet chips in it. And then actually, uh, my suitcase. And then uh, some uh, marigold plants with like a little cardboard so that the ones on the top don't drop down. It's all stacked up. Let's go ahead and uh, head to the other side. All right, so passenger side door, rear door, this is where uh, Luca was stayed. So as you could see, Luca sat on the little nice uh, mat or uh, blanket there on top. And uh, right next to Luca, we had my plants right there. Uh, those are some pepper plants. Here I had even some more plants. Uh, actually, these are water spinach cuttings that I'm doing. Um, if I go straight down, <laughs> there's a jackfruit right there. And, uh, and then if you see behind Luca, there is this, and actually this was from the car. And so that was like a divider so he couldn't like see behind. And it's like all my plants up top. And then down below, I got cases and cases of organic blueberries. And then if we remove this uh, blanket that he was sitting on, um, you can see I got a case of uh, premium organic apples there that he was sitting on directly. Down below that, certified organic pineapples. And then below that it says actually sugar crackers, but I assure you that is not sugar crackers. That's actually a jackfruit. <laughs> Over here, he was also sitting on um, 36 heads of organic celery. <laughs> so it's probably nice and cool. And then uh, more organic pineapples. I'll turn the box upside down so you have a nice uh, place to sit on. A little bit of padding with the towel. Anyways, uh, what I'm going to do next for you guys, actually we're going to go ahead and unpack it. And then actually I'm just going to go ahead and pull up uh, and show you guys actually case by case what I got. Uh, inside. All right, so now I'm in my backyard. It's actually doing quite good this time of year. And uh, yeah, lots. Oh man, my sugar snap piece fell over. Oh my gosh. Um, anyways, I'll show you guys the plants I got this trip. I got uh, basically one uh, flat of the Italian parsley. Got one flat flat of the Swiss chard. Uh, half flat of some cherry tomatoes. Half flat of some eggplants. 
a full flat of a uh, new pepper I haven't seen before. It's called Pepper Candy Cane Red, and it's like a two-tone. Then I got a flat of the standard curly parsley and a whole flat of uh, edible marigolds that look beautiful and will add decoration and antioxidants to my salads. Let's go ahead and head inside and uh, show you guys the produce I got this trip. All right, so now I thought I'd go over all the different produce items I got this haul and maybe talk about them a little bit. I mean, every time I do a haul video, it's a little bit different. I always try to have a different emphasis besides just showing you guys actually the killer deals I got to hopefully motivate you guys to go down to the produce terminal, whether it's in LA, if that's near you, and I drive several hours to get there myself um, because it is worth it, or whether that's, you know, finding other good deals near you or visiting other produce terminals. You know, there's always a way to eat affordably. I mean, even if it, even if you have to resort to like dumpster diving because some stores like I was just at Whole Foods the other day and they're throwing out like good produce that might have one little small you know bruise in it they're throwing it away if you dug it out of the trash cut off the bad part eat the good part you got free produce right and hopefully I'll have a video soon on dumpster diving how to get produce I don't normally dumpster dive I'll let you guys know I just go to the produce terminal it's a lot more fun and I probably get you know a little bit better quality stuff in any case, the first deal I got uh, this uh, time are uh, blueberries. So I got one, two, three, four cases of these blueberries. Uh, these are the Nature Ripe Blueberries Organic uh, product of Chile this time of year. And uh, these are six ounce. And the cool thing about these, if you open them up, they're like some really nice large berries. And they're all in fairly good shape. They basically... Uh, what they did was they sorted through all these to make sure that you're getting only good berries. Um, each one of these cases was only nine dollars. So we'll like do a ching noise and put like how much each one cost. And the thing is, you know, uh, about a couple weeks ago I bought like two flats, which was 24 pieces of blueberries. They were in like a little bit more worse shape. And I would sit down and eat from four to six like little packages in one meal. Now, yeah, some of those ones I actually had to sort out so I didn't get to eat like the full package. But, you know, I'll just literally have like a meal of blueberries and it's actually quite good. And the other thing I'll do is if they are going bad, before they go bad, you know, we'll wash them, dry them, and then we'll just freeze them. So now we have uh, frozen organic blueberries for literally uh, pennies on the dollar. So that's definitely really cool. All right, so if you guys thought that last deal was amazing, because I thought it was pretty amazing when I found actually pretty good, decent blueberries that are nice and large. Generally, if they're larger, they're gonna be sweeter. Um, I found these guys like a couple, you know, booths down or vendors down. And uh, once again, these are more <laughs> organic blueberries. And honestly, some of these will probably end up getting frozen here, but I'm gonna be having like some, lots of blueberry mono meals. Anyways, uh, yeah, these guys are the giant, and these guys are a little bit smaller, and if you open these guys up and look closely, even though they just, they appear to look pretty good, I mean, there's some kind of messed up ones in there, there's kind of some of them that are like, I mean, not really moldy yet, but they're like, they're, they're like, they're like dripping their juice out. <laughs> so what really, what needs to happen on these, we need to actually open each one, sort through, get all the bad ones out, and then basically pack them back up, put them in the fridge, they're going to last longer, you know, rot begots rot, so if you leave like one or two bad ones in there, then they're going to rot more, so it depends, like, you got more money or time, right, if you got more time like me, I'm going to sort through, pick out the bad ones, keep the good ones, they're going to last in the fridge, um, you know, at proper temperature, I'll keep these, all these berries, approximately 34 degrees, with a berry breeze ozone generator in there, or activated oxygen generator, that's going to keep the mold and bacteria at bay from growing on these berries. Uh, so these guys should, uh, the other ones will definitely last like easily two weeks. These will probably last a week, maybe two. I don't know, it just depends. But yeah, oh, so anyways, these guys were 12 pieces, 6 ounces. This is the giant brand. Once again, these are from Chile Organic, 5 bucks. Amazing deal. I, I did buy four cases. I only have three here because actually I gave a whole case uh, to my brother, his wife, and his son. Because uh, everybody needs to eat more blueberries. And I would encourage you guys to eat more berries, right? What I try to look at these days is that, and, and say is that not all fruits are created equal. Hey, fruits are great food. More people should eat fruits. Fruits are an under-eaten food. And more people need to stop eating junk foods and Cokes and 
um, sodas and cookies and candy and animal foods in excess. Instead, they need to eat more fruit, right? But not all fruit is created equal, and I want you guys to focus on high antioxidant fruits. These are really colorful, pigmented fruits, you know, that generally have uh, more nutrients and actually less sugar. Not to say that sugar is bad, but I want you guys to focus on antioxidant-rich fruits because that is really where my money's at. So up next, we have organic cucumbers. Most of these cucumbers will get juiced, but some of these will be spiralized, uh, dipped in different sauces, and eaten. These are all in fairly good shape. Uh, once again, organic, and basically a case of 12 was 8 bucks. So definitely a really good deal. And, uh, you know, I want to let you guys know when you guys pick out, like, English cucumbers, what you want to do is you always want to feel the ends. Ooh, this end's a little bit soft, and this end's nice and hard. So, if an end is soft, that means you should probably not buy it if you're paying full price. If you're buying it for super cheap, that's good, because I'll probably just end up juicing these real fast. But if they do get soft in the ends, that's your sign that you need to use these guys ASAP. Let's see, like this side, these ones are actually a little bit hard on this case, but I think this case, uh, well actually they're still pretty hard too. I guess there's a random one or two that might be a little bit soft in the ends, so I will be sure to actually put those on top, um, you know, when I pack those into the fridges so that this will be the first one that I grab to use. Alright, next up we got a case of Earthbound Organic, and check this out, we have here are some uh, yellow squash. Box basically weighs about 20 pounds, and uh, the yellow squash, all 20 pounds of them were 10 bucks. So that's like what 50 cent a pound. <laughs> Definitely a good deal. Um, we'll spiralize these guys, make them into spaghetti, and then I'll probably end up juicing a lot of them, especially you know ones that are kind of like maybe not looking so good. These are mostly in good shape actually, but I like to add zucchini to juice. Actually, another good use of zucchini. Um, whether it's a yellow squash or standard zucchini squash, is to blend them on up to make your dressings and soups thicker without adding additional nuts. Next up, more vegetables. As you guys notice, like I mostly buy fruits and grow most of my vegetables, but some vegetables just don't make sense to grow when they're so inexpensive. Plus, like if I grew this vegetable, which is actually celery stalks from Earthbound Farms Organic, um, they never really head up really nice. I get a lot of celery leaves and that's great for flavoring things. And I get a few stalks, but they never really get the, to the, be the big big ones that you could buy in the store. And if you guys are followers of uh, the medical medium, um, he says celery is your cure-all. So like he just wants people to juice celery. I get so many people saying, Joe, what's the best juicer to juice straight celery because a medical medium says that's what I should do. I'm like, all right, well, get an Omega NC 800, man. Then I'll tear up the celery or get like a, a, a twin gear. So like the Green Star Elite or Green Star Pro. Anyways, I could juice as much celery as I want now because check it out. I got a case of celery. This thing is actually quite heavy. And there are 30 heads. <laughs> of organic celery. Now I did get some organic celery, actually just the same exact stuff at the dollar store for a dollar a head and that's actually a pretty decent price. And these ones, you know, there might be a stock here that's kind of yellow so if this yellow outer stock will get torn off and composted. But I'll use all the nice deep rich uh, green stocks in my juices of course. But uh, uh, 30 heads of celery, this one's actually a bit smaller, um, seven dollars organic. That's amazing. Now, Here's the thing, right? When you go to the store and buy this celery, and it's likely that if you go to the store, Sprouts, Whole Foods, your local supermarket, you're buying some celery, and then maybe it's a little bit yellow, not quite as green or whatever. You know, you could tell by like some of the leaves on the top like this, right? They're kind of yellowish instead of green, right? If they're a little bit looking like about like this, guess how old that celery is, right? This celery has been in the wholesaler's refrigerator system for about 30 days, about a month. How do I know that? Well, because on the side of this box, but it, there's nowhere printing on the individual celeries, is a date. It's uh, 3 08 18, and it's been approximately a month. So, you know, when you're buying celery at the grocery store, it's probably like a month old. Now, a food that's been a month old that's celery, it's still healthier than pretty much most anything else at the grocery store, right? But it's not as healthy as like going to your farmer's market and buying celery from the farmer that you ask when he harvested it and if he grew it and he harvested that morning and like I saw some amazing celery this weekend at the farmers market they're like huge 
and they're harvested the same day. So there's even more vibrancy, more life, and it's quite potential that, you know, it's even more nutritious uh, because of there's better farming practices, hopefully with local organic farmers. That being said, that may not always be the case, um, but it definitely, uh, freshness is very important. But, you know, I'm definitely glad with uh, celery for, I don't know, whatever, 30 uh, heads for seven bucks because I'm just going to basically juice all of it. And to me, the best water on earth is not watered out of your tap, not using a distiller or reverse osmosis or any kind of filtration system. It's water that's filtered by the plants that I then extract with my juicer and then get to put it in me. And I want to encourage you guys to stay hydrated, not with by drinking six to ten glasses of water like they say, but to eat water-rich foods. So here's the thing. When you get your water from water-rich foods, whether you're juicing them, whether you're going to put them in a smoothie, or whether you're going to eat them, right, you're getting structured water that actually has the minerals in the form that we need to take them in, right? They have the right the charge on, they have the correct charge on them, so they're basically chelated, right? Because the plant has done all the hard work to take those inorganic minerals and made them into an organic form we can use. So the next deal I got that I was amazed to find is actually organic asparagus. You guys know how much this stuff costs at the store, right? Maybe $2.99 a pound for organic asparagus on sale. And I like that on here it says actually, it says, uh, where, did, where did I see that? Over here it says uh, California size jumbo, but this is actually product of Mexico, but I guess they use the same uh, packaging for product of the U.S. But this is organic, and let's go ahead and show you guys what these uh, beautiful asparagus look like. I mean, these are actually pretty good primo asparagus. A little bit of wrinkling at the bottom, a little bit old, you know, probably should be kept in water. I'll probably take this out, put it on a plate in the fridge. Um, with some water so they could absorb the water. But look at that, really nice asparagus. Now I want to encourage you guys when you're shopping, whether it's at the grocery store or the produce terminal, try to expand the different items you guys are consuming because asparagus has unique phytonutrients that are not in any other vegetable, right? And so I want to encourage you guys to always eat a diversity of foods, right? And yeah, asparagus may make your pee stink. And because I have so much asparagus, yeah, of course I might be chopping this up, putting it into salads, chopping it up, adding it to soups. I'll probably be juicing, honestly, most of it because I got a lot of it for sure. Um, you can eat it raw. It does not have to be cooked by any means. I'll probably just also be um, blending up a nice sauce and basically dipping this in a sauce, whether that's a guacamole or some kind of like, you know, a vegetable nut-based dressing that I'll get to enjoy on my asparagus. Oh, the best part, the asparagus was... Um, ten dollars for this 11 pound package next up i got a case of tomatoes and this time i got some cherry tomatoes these are actually organic uh, grape tomatoes a uh, really nice packages looks pretty good I'm, I'm happy to say that this is actually uh huellings organics so if you guys know like produce pretty good like i do huellings they're basically a big hot house company and they grow things in hot houses or greenhouses so generally um, you know, they use IPM or integrated pest management practices, which means they don't generally spray pesticides haphazardly. Um, they release beneficial insects and, uh, you know, will only spray in certain sections if needed. That being said, inside a greenhouse, they don't have to spray any, um, like, herbicides because there's, like, no weeds in their greenhouse. So they're keeping it clean. They keep the door shut so it keeps most of the pest out. Occasionally they'll get an outbreak, so I feel it's a much safer and cleaner food to eat than conventional. Although in general, I do prefer organic, but you gotta get what you could get, right? But anyways, now they're having an organic um, hothouse grown. Now generally things grown in a hothouse are also grown under hydroponic uh, situations, so they're actually not grown in soil, and this is a big contention uh, with the USDA and if it was going to be allowable to grow organic hydroponic which I guess the ruling turned out that yes you can uh, that being said I do encourage you guys to always eat organic soil grown whenever possible but hey at this price I got basically uh, 12 of these little whatever pint size uh, uh, one dry pint here 12 of them for uh, eight bucks and so that's a really killer deal uh, less than a dollar each for these guys and uh, these guys are actually really nice shape they're nice and uh, firm not too soft, so even out of a fridge, these will last, you know, several weeks. 
um, with no problem. And I could, uh, you know, dehydrate these guys, juice them on up if I, you know, am unable to eat them all fresh. I'll have to cut them up and add them to salads, add them to soups, and I'll even probably juice a bunch of this stuff and just make a nice tomato juice that I might use actually as a soup base. Or, of course, making uh, delicious and nice uh, V8 style juices with uh, tomatoes plus many other different uh, vegetables out of my garden. And, of course, uh, using some of the celery you guys saw earlier. So next up, I got a case of fruit, and actually I got a lot, a lot of fruit too. But uh, this case is actually uh, right here, case of organic kiwis imported all the way from Italy. And uh, basically this box weighs about 20 pounds, and this whole box was $13 at the Wholesale Produce Terminal. Now generally kiwis, they generally pick them unripe. It's quite sad. Uh, because if you pick kiwis ripe, they're not shippable, they're not going to be able to transport, and then they're basically higher in the enzymes that cause your tongue to burn uh, when you eat them, and also they don't have as much nutrition or as much sweetness. So I do encourage you guys, whenever you can, and this is kind of rare to do this, to try to buy kiwis at your local farmer's market, or even better, pick them off the vine when they're just totally soft and ready to eat. Now that's pretty rare. Normally most growers will just at least harvest them Put them in cold storage for a while until they sell them. And yeah, if I remember, I'll put a link down below to a kiwi video that I talk about how to easily uh, open a kiwi and eat it uh, literally easier than opening a candy bar. So the next fruit I got actually was probably the thing I was most excited about, although it's actually also one of the most expensive things I bought this time at the produce terminal. Let me go ahead and show you guys are in these boxes there. Look at that. I got two cases of cactus pears, California grown, not Mexican grown. Mexican ones are super cheap. These ones are actually a lot more expensive, which really is not, not that expensive. Uh, 17 pounds per box. Each box cost me uh, $19, so that was actually over a dollar a pound. But I, so I splurged because a lot of the other produce prices are way cheap. But look at these guys. I got to pick out the boxes I want. They had probably like six boxes in stock. I picked the ones that have the, the two ripest cactus fruits because they're developed more. They develop more of the different uh, nutrients in the fruit, including betalanes, also taurine, according to studies in these cactus fruits. And these are really dip, di di deep, rich, colored, pigmented foods. And it's a food that, unfortunately, I don't see too many people into a raw fruit and vegetable diet or even vegans eating. So I want to encourage you guys to you know, expand the varieties of your diet. And actually, that's one of the reasons why I like the produce terminal. I mean, as much as I get really good deals at the produce terminal, I literally get to find produce that I just, if I went to 20 Asian markets or Mexican markets, I wouldn't find cactus fruits this time of year because they're really in short supply. But if you go to the source where the place is buying from, you have a higher probability of finding that specific fruit or vegetable that you want to eat. So, yeah. Eat your cactus fruit, guys. They're so good. So the cactus fruits that you guys just saw, generally how I eat those is why you could just peel them and eat them, and you could swallow the seeds and all, they'll just go right through you. I generally like to juice them with actually uh, coconut cactus fruit juice milk is what I call it, because literally I juice, um, I make coconut milk, and then I basically at the same time I extract the uh, cactus fruit juice, if I remember I'll put a link down below to that video. Anyway, this is something that I rarely buy at the produce terminal, but it was such a good deal. And uh, it's from uh, Seneca Organics or whatever. And what it is, it's a uh, Crimson Goldfinger. Let's go ahead and open this box up for you. And it's basically 16 of these bags. And uh, these are actually organic Crimson Goldfinger fingerling potatoes. You're like, John, you can't eat potatoes raw. Well, yes, I know that. <laughs> well, technically you could eat anything raw. It just might have some negative health effects, right? And so, in this point in my life, I'm trying to expand the things I'm eating instead of whittle them down. Because it seems like if you're vegan, you learn you can't eat meat, you can't eat eggs, you can't eat dairy. And if you're raw vegan, you can't eat Oreo cookies, or you can't eat Wonder Bread, or you can't eat vegan bread, or vegan diet cheese, because you're raw, right? And so, there's, a diet can be so limiting. And once again, these limits, I want to remind you guys, are self-imposed. You make your limits on what you choose to eat and what you choose not to eat. I try to kind of expand that and although t uh, potatoes are not something I regularly eat on a raw foods diet and would not encourage people to eat um, you know it's something that I do want to get some of the nutrients in the potatoes in me sometimes so you know I'll probably like maybe uh, juice a bag or two along with some other 
uh, fruits and vegetables when I make juices, so I'll get some of the nutrients in potatoes. I would much rather uh, juice sweet potatoes than standard potatoes, uh, personally, but I do want to get some of these in me. And then the other thing is that uh, my roommate and my dog will eat these guys, and that's probably a really good food for them. And the reason why I got these actually was because I couldn't pass up a deal. This case, which was uh, 16 times 1.5 pounds, was only $7 for these nice little uh, baby uh, potatoes, organic. Now, the other thing, other thing that's really cool is, that, you know, if I choose to, I could just take these potatoes because they're nice little small potatoes, I could bury them in my garden. And then they'll grow potato plants and I'll grow more potatoes. So these are basically, I could use these as seeds for my garden as well. So yeah, definitely a really good deal at the produce terminal this trip. All right, so here's the next case of fruit I bought. And actually this is quite a unique experience and it's something that is unique to find because I, I rarely see this fruit on the West Coast that often because this fruit is actually called the unique fruit, U-N-I-Q. Yes, that is the name of the fruit. Have you guys ever heard of it? If you guys are die-hard raw foodists, you guys will know what the root, uh, unique fruit is, especially if you guys live on the East Coast where generally these guys tend to show up more because this this case right here was shipped all the way from Jamaica Mon. Yes, Jamaica Mon, the Rastafarians. They grew my fruit in this box. Well, as they fall out. And this fruit is actually called a unique fruit. And I think this is a cross between like a pomelo and maybe some kind of tangerine or something. But anyways, these guys, there's like, uh, how many are there? 14 pieces in here. These are quite big, quite heavy, and these are quite unique. I mean, this is a special citrus variety that you could peel and eat out of hand. And it's actually sweet, and it is so delicious. You guys got to try it. Generally, it's distributed by like Melissa's, and if you find like a grocery store near you that has like a big tropical fruit display, they'll generally have unique fruits, but standard grocery stores don't generally get these because they are so special and in such limited supply. Anyways, uh, these guys can cost, you know, usually a couple bucks each, but I got this whole case of 14 unique fruits for just $10. So, you know, some of these are quite big, all the way from Jamaica, I'm, su I'm supporting some Jamaican farmers. <laughs> So uh, I'm glad to do that, and I'm glad to have, you know, different kinds of fruits that I wouldn't normally be able to buy near me at really good prices. The next thing I got, actually, is I got some organic pineapples, right? And uh, each case has seven pieces in it, and I paid $10.50 per case. And actually, this was actually at the new terminal. And then I went to the old terminal and found people selling the exact same ones for $12. So it definitely pays a shop around. Uh, generally, the new terminal is going to be less expensive than the old terminal because people at the old terminal uh, will generally buy some of the stuff that they're reselling from the new terminal, <laughs> all right? But the new terminal can be like more intimidating to shop at and go to because you can't really see the produce for the most part. Sometimes they have some of it out, but most of it actually is in the back. So you got to kind of know what you want and ask for it there. But I just generally walk through and see if they have anything out that looks organic, looks good. Generally, they'll put the cheap deals or the good deals like out in front and they'll display like cases and cases of them. Anyways, uh, yeah, organic pineapples are delicious. Basically, these guys will end up getting juiced into my vegetable juices. Um, I, and when they're organic, right, they are not sprayed with fungicides, right? If you're getting non-organic pineapples, they are sprayed with fungicides. And if you were able to read the box they came in, it would say uh, treated with thiamobenzol and other fungicides and things. And so uh, these organic ones are not. The other thing that's really cool is you could even make fermented beverages with your pineapple core and rind, the part you actually don't eat. If I remember, I'll post a link down below uh, to a video where I talk about that more. So up next, uh, we got some things from the farmer's market and also the dollar store, actually. So let me show you guys what, what I got. Uh, over in this box here, I basically got uh, 12 pounds um, of blood oranges. These are nice little blood oranges. They're small, that's why they're pretty cheap, but they're basically a um, dollar a pound uh, for organic blood oranges. These are nice and rich and deep purple on the inside. And I want to encourage you guys, when you guys do buy the blood oranges, these are the ones that are the dark pigmented ones. You know, some of them, you know, are really light. Like the skin, if, if it's like light like this, it's, it's usually going to be light on the inside. You want to find the blood oranges that are like really nice and purple on the outside. That means the inside flesh is going to be deeper and richer. Now the blood oranges are not known for being like sweet oranges or anything like that, but they have a really unique flavor that are quite good. Can, they can also be lower acid, of course, if they're riper. 
but they're rich in the purple pigments, man, the anthocyanins. I'm really into highly pigmented foods, you know, the cactus fruits you guys saw, these guys, and some carrots you guys were going to see in a minute. Uh, but yeah, definitely some amazing food. Blood oranges, these will last, you know, easily a couple weeks in the fridge. Next, in this case, we got some stuff actually from the farmer's market, so I got the calls of uh, blood oranges over on this side, and also some uh, tangerines. And these blood oranges are not good qual as good quality as these guys. If you look, you can see a little bit of like blushing, like purple color, but it doesn't compare to the purple color on these guys. But these guys were only like 39 cents a pound. And also got some tangerines here that had some kind of like black, funky mold stuff on it that we basically white washed off really good. And that's this side. And then over on this side, we got uh, coconuts. So coconuts, um, you know, when they're at the dollar store, the 99 only store, my favorite dollar store, they have produce. Um, these are two for a dollar. Some of these are a little bit small, some of them are bigger, but actually at uh, 50 cents a piece, they're actually cheaper to buy them at the dollar store than at the produce terminal. And when I buy these, I'm not buying them for the water, I'm mainly buying them for the meat. Uh, this meat will probably end up uh, to be juiced along with my cactus fruit to make my cactus fruit uh, coconut milk uh, juice. And then over here we got some uh, Artisan Farms uh, tomatoes. So. I don't know if this is from Artisan, but these are from a USA, and it says uh, wash before using, do not refrigerate. And what these are, these are the basically called Kumados, which is the, the brand name, but these are basically like the black uh, tomatoes. So instead of being like uh, red and having lycopene like the other ones I got, they're really rich, more deep, dark, uh, dark green, purplish, brown color, right? and they're more rich in phytonutrients. So if you guys could like choose between like brown tomatoes versus the red ones and then the same price, get the brown ones. They're more nutritious for you guys, right? And I don't really care about the flavor, the taste, especially when they're, you know, actually these guys are generally also hydroponic grown, so they're usually picked riper. So that's a good thing. But basically it's about a one pound for a dollar. So I got basically four pounds of these guys uh, to use as well. So next up, I got a case of apples. Yes, how do you like them apples? I got a case of uh, organic golden delicious apples. I've uh, been taking a bunch out and giving them to friends and whatnot, but there's 66 apples, and these are nice size apples here. Oh, I dropped it. It's gonna be bruised now, I better eat it. Anyways, these are organic golden delicious. These are not like totally perfect apples. They got a little small, you know, bruised spots or whatever, but these are, and, and they're getting a bit soft actually, but these are perfectly edible when you open the box. Mmm, you can smell them. They smell like apples. They're just all in there. Three layers. I want to encourage you guys, when you pick your apples, pick for color. Super important. Let's see here. Like this one, I don't know if you guys can see the difference. This one is kind of like more green tinge, and this one's kind of like more bright, like uh, yellow. And so if you're picking like this style, you want them kind of more bright and vibrant yellow than kind of green. They'll be more nutritious. And if you're getting the red style apples that are red in color, right, uh, galas, for example, try to get the deeper, richer red uh, galas than the ones that are maybe more greenish and not so full colored. Uh, they're going to be more nutritious for you guys. Generally, apples, you know, uh, when they're cheap like this, like 10 bucks for a case, you know, I'll buy them, they'll store in the fridge easily like a month at proper temperature, and I'll just juice them as time goes on. If I feel bored, you know, I'll eat apples if I want a different flavor sensation than some of the tropical fruits that I like to enjoy that I bought. But basically, the apples will sit in the fridge, get juiced, and I'm not going to eat them until I'm done with eating all the other cool berries and tropical fruits, cactus fruits, that I got on the trip. But yeah, I can't complain. This is literally 40 pounds of apples, organic, for 10 bucks. All right, so next up, we got some sugar crackers. Yes, I was at the Asian store, and I got a box of sugar crackers. Well, actually, this is only the box. Don't worry. I don't eat sugar crackers. Don't encourage you guys to do that either. And in my view... You know, sugar crackers, while they could be vegan, you know, they're probably no better for you than eating some animal products and dairy and eggs and all that stuff because processed vegan junk food with white flour, white sugar, that stuff is really bad news and I don't encourage you guys to eat it. I encourage you guys to eat healthy food that literally tastes like you're eating bubble gum. And that's what I got next here in these boxes. Here's one <laughs> and here's two. And what these are, these are called jackfruits. And if I remember, I'll put a link down below to where I eat a 25, 20 pound jackfruit and share with you guys my uh, tips on how to pick a good one. But actually, honestly, you know, that not everything is always the best to buy at the produce terminal. A lot of things are, right? But some things are not that good to buy at the produce terminal. Like, 
For example, blood oranges, right? Blood oranges or citrus in trade in general is not going to be as good at the produce terminal than if you could buy it at a farmer's market. So, for example, I saw organic Valencias at the produce terminal, right? I probably could have gotten them for super cheap. But they're from Mexico and they're picked far too early. They're far too acidic. They're going to rack out, mess up your teeth because they're so acid. I want to encourage you guys to eat low acid foods and eat citrus that are truly ripe. Like you'll, you're going to get more riper fruits at the farmer's market and ask them when they picked them, when they picked them the day before, a couple days before instead of weeks before, right? But the same thing goes with the jackfruit, right? I find that at the produce terminal, while you could score a good deal on jackfruit and it could be perfect ripeness, generally at the produce terminal, you'll find like hard jackfruit that's really nice and green, super hard, and I don't encourage you guys to buy hard jackfruit. It may ripen up, but in many cases, it may not ripen up and you're gonna be stuck. And actually at the wholesale produce terminal, they were charging 65 cents a pound for jackfruit. And actually, this jack for you guys are seeing here, I got at a local Asian market in Rosemead, California, for 59 cents a pound. So not only did I save six cents a pound, <laughs> you can see I'm excited about that, um, by buying at an Asian market, but more importantly, you know, they had several, probably like a couple dozen jackfruits that I got to pick through all the different jackfruits, all several dozen, and, and pick out the ripest ones that for me and when you go to the produce terminal some cases you could just got to buy them by the case and whatever's in there is whatever's in there and there's been times where I find a case and one has a really nice ripe one and the other one isn't and they don't like you sometimes swipping, swapping around like the fruits to get the ripest ones right but it depends on who you go to but anyways these guys 59 cents a pound and you know uh, they're they actually have a nice uh, markings on there so like the the mountains are flattened out also this is a little bit soft so I could depress this and uh, there's one, oh, this has a soft spot, it has to go in the fridge pretty soon. And uh, here's the other one, and now I can uh, <laughs> recycle that box. So yeah, here's the other jackfruit. Um, yeah, and so I would encourage you guys to keep these out and probably like rotate them every day. So like, don't keep them like this on the table, but keep them like this. Even better yet, it'd probably be best to hang these guys so there's no point of jackfruit like touching a surface because that's where they could rot. You want to have nice airflow on them, so even hanging them up with a fan on them would be good. And, uh, you know, hopefully they're going to ripen up for you guys a little bit. But, yeah, two jackfruits, 59 cents a pound. I think overall these both these guys were about 20 bucks. So next up, I got pretty much a case of these guys. It's the Rhythm Superfoods Beet Chips, and they're all in the um, packages here. Uh, beet Chips Naked. It says uh, dried, not fried, but I've talked to the company at the trade show, and they will not disclose the temperature that they dry these at. I personally believe that these guys are freeze dried, but I don't really know for sure, but I don't really care, right? Um, these guys were $1.99 actually at the grocery outlet bargain market, one of my favorite places to shop, because um, they'll also have a lot of organic food and they have a really nice nosh section that they have raw foods at sometimes. And here's the thing, although these may not be raw, all right, I also got the Rhythm Superfoods Kale Chips for $1.99. So these are the same price. This one actually has like, 2.2 ounces exactly, and this one is 1.4 ounces, right? But which one is healthier for you guys? The raw kale chips or the the beets that we don't know how uh, the temperature was dried at, right? Um, I'm going to say basically the beets, even though they're not raw, they're definitely way healthier than the kale chips because the kale chips have like, you know, a lot more sodium content uh, than the beets because the beets have only the naturally occurring sodium in the beets. There's nothing else. I, I believe this to be freeze dried beets, but they may be dried another way. They are definitely not fried. <laughs> so get that out of your mind. And the beets have crazy phytonutrients in them, right? And that's why I like to juice a lot of beets. Um, have, I have beet powder uh, when I travel, but you could also eat the beets and this gives you something nice and crunchy that if you're into raw foods, you guys don't normally uh, get to eat. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and if you guys don't have a grocery outlet near you and they don't have these all the time, they'll have them sometimes, um, go to Trader Joe's. You can find these pretty much these same beet chips at Trader Joe's are $2.99, so it's like a buck more. Um, but yeah, you guys could snack on some beet chips, which, you know, one of the healthiest things you guys could eat, 100% beets that are minimally processed. And they're amazing to taste. I definitely encourage you guys to get off your potato chips, eat beet chips, and uh, well, second best after that would be some kind of raw kale chips. So the next two items I got actually were from the farmer's market. I went to the Hollywood farmer's market this trip and I got these nice cool bags. These bags were from uh, Costco. They're insulated so they keep things a bit cooler. Plus they're really big and quite durable. 
This bag probably had like 30 pounds when I went to, went to maybe 35 pounds actually when I went to the uh, Hollywood Farmer's Market. I loaded it up and it carried it back like three blocks to the car. This one had 30 pounds. Amazing. And uh, it totally held. It's super strong because actually the straps go down at the bottom. They're, they're really sealed in there good. has a nice zipper on it. And let me show you guys what I got here in this bag. So in this bag I got Valencia oranges um, from the Farmer's Market, not from the terminal. And I encourage you guys to get them actually at the farmer's market because uh, they're definitely going to be riper. <laughs> and so uh, uh, I got basically uh, 25 pounds of Valencia oranges, uh, organic, uh, for $14. Yeah, 25 pounds for $14. Really good deal. And then I also got some avocados, which I probably should have put on top. They were underneath. They were Some of them are hard. Some of them are getting softer. But I got some avocados, the larger ones were two for a dollar, California grown avocados. And then the uh, smaller ones here oops, were uh, three for a dollar for some nice Haas avocados, you know. I like to get the deals, but you know, I also like to support California farmers. Um, you know, lo lately I've been getting local, or he here in Las Vegas, uh, non-organic avocados like four or five for a dollar. So that's kind of hard to beat for small like Mexican ones, but you know, California avocados taste significantly better than the Mexican ones, so I'll support them when I can. I don't like to buy avocados at the produce terminal because it's just too, way too many avocados to eat. So the last item I got at the farmer's market, Hollywood farmer's market, this trip was in this bag here. Now this bag weighs nearly 50 pounds. This is one of those Costco bags. And I had this bag, which is nearly 50 pounds. The other bag that was probably like pushing 40 pounds, 35, 40 pounds, one on each shoulder. So like, you know, that's like maybe 75 pounds, right? I weigh maybe like 140 pounds. So this is almost, this is more than half my weight that I was, I basically put on my shoulders and walk like three, four blocks uh, to the car after the market, you know, and vegans can be strong or especially raw vegans can be strong. I mean, look at Mike Velasquez. He actually works out and does amazing feats of strength, right? Check out Mike. Hey, what's up, Mike? Um, but I, I don't really like work out. I spin my compost tumblers, I carry heavy produce boxes back to my car and I carry my produce, you know, and, and just get regular real world exercise. But I'm quite strong actually. Anyways, uh, inside here, let me show you guys what we got here. Check it out. This is probably one of my prize scores the, of the, uh, the weekend here. Look at that. See that? Oh, purple carrots. I love my purple carrots, man. These guys are like really nice and rich. Uh, large. I got to pick hand select all these carrots that are like really deep purple and nice and big. So when I wash one carrot, I cut it in half and juice it. I'll have nice, a lot of nice, rich, delicious carrot juice. Um, if you just bought them off the shelf, these would be like uh, two dollars a pound. But I'm like, hey, can I buy them cheaper if I bought a case of them? And they said yes. So I just filled up this bag, hand selecting each carrot, and so I was able to fit like literally. When they weighed this bag out, it was 48 pounds, or so literally 50 pounds of organic carrots from the gardens of Los Olivos. And I would encourage you guys, right, if you guys could find them, buy purple carrots. Unfortunately, at most stores, they don't probably carry purple carrots. You could find like some small bundled organic purple carrots, maybe at a Better Sprouts or Whole Foods, or maybe like natural grocers near you. I know some of them around here sell those. They're quite expensive. Um, a better deal would be to buy like the mixed bags of organic carrots, whether that's at Trader Joe's or natural grocers. They're pretty, they're about a dollar a pound. If you buy them that way, two pounds for about a dollar and nine, depending on what part of the country, it might be three bucks. And then when you buy a bag, you want to look at that bag and try to find the bag that actually has the most purple carrots because they're a lot more valuable to me than the standard other colors. Uh, as I said, these guys will get mostly juiced, although I do like to grate these guys into salads, you know, for nice texture and also nice colors. I really want you guys to eat the pigments. And if you guys seen, a lot of the things I bought this trip, you know, the brown tomatoes, the purple carrots, the, um, the cactus fruits, um, these are really rich uh, pigmented foods that are good for you. And yeah, they're, I mean, they have done studies on rats, which I do not approve of, where they fed rats a junk food diet, right? The, the rats ballooned. They got fat, they had heart disease, they had blood sugar issues, and when they basically uh, stop feeding the rats the junk food and fed them purple carrots and still half junk food but half purple carrots you know they lost weight they improved their circulation they improved their blood sugar status um, just because they drank the purple carrot juice in addition to the junk food now I'm not telling you guys this so you guys could eat junk food and drink purple carrot juice or other antioxidant rich 
uh, and pigmented uh, juices. I'm telling you guys this so you guys could do the best without doing the other crap, so you guys could literally disease proof yourself. So that's why the purple carrot is so important to me. This bag was literally like $50 the produce and if you guys have watched this video most of the produce i buy is definitely well under a dollar a pound but i think this and the cactus fruits uh some of the most expensive things i bought and like likely so you know i could get or i could get organic um uh orange carrots for about 50 60 cents a pound probably 60 cents a pound but these are easily worth the extra 40 cents a pound and the other thing is is that these carrots are are excellent stores right i'm gonna these guys are going to get bagged up individually in maybe like five pound bags, uh, tied off with a little hole in there so they can breathe a little bit but not too much, and they'll store in the fridge easily, you know, for two months without any problem. And uh, once again, these guys actually are certified organic. I did talk to the farmers and they do, do say they use rock dust minerals to grow them. So yeah, purple carrots. Oh, I think I'm down to the last item I got this time at the wholesale produce terminal, and I want to do a little test demonstration for you. So the best produce item I've saved for last, who cannot resist delicious mangoes, right? And this time what I found first at the produce store are these guys, and these guys are called the Champagne or Adolfo mangoes, uh, depending on where you find them. But uh, basically these are like the kidney bean style shaped mangoes that are nice and yellow. And uh, when I first saw these guys, I'm like, I tested them, they're a little bit soft, these are perfect, 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 perfect color. They're not organic, and I asked them how much, they're like seven bucks. And these are basically a 14 count uh, for seven bucks. So that's basically 50 cents a mango for like really nice, large size, perfectly ripened fruit, right? I mean, my friend recently for some uh, mangoes, I don't know if they're this count size, might have been smaller, at Whole Foods paid a dollar each. So these are at least half as much as Whole Foods. I suspect that those ones were a little bit smaller than these, but I don't really know for sure. So num number one, this is a great deal. And then furthermore, to get the price down more, I was like, how about if I take three boxes for 20? He said, all right, so that's a little bit less than 50 cents a mango. We've already been snacking on some of these guys here, right? And then later in the terminal, right, I was walking around and I found these guys. These are organic uh, uh, champagne or Adolfo mangoes, right? Right here, purity. And these are actually 16 count for seven dollars so actually per mango these are a little bit less but these mangoes are also a little bit smaller and if you look closely uh, you know some of these guys are a little bit more green tinge and not quite as deep and a rich color as these guys I mean, you guys could see that on the HD camera but this guy's like a lot more deeper richer uh, yellow and this guy's a little bit more lighter yellow right and it's like John I thought you only ate organic man well so as you guys saw most of the produce I bought at the wholesale produce terminal is organic. There's few exceptions that you know you. I didn't get that organic. Whether that's a uh, integrated pest management, whether that's you know the avocados that generally are lower sprayed, whether that's a jackfruit that you literally you can't find organic, or whether these these mangoes that actually I found these guys first and then found these guys. But nonetheless, I'm happy things worked out the way they did because here's the thing: I have these mangoes to eat first because they're riper, right? And we could tear through some mangoes. I could probably eat four or five in one sitting, so that one box is basically like three sittings and poof it's gone and then I have these guys that are a little bit more harder and firmer that as I eat these guys when I'm done these guys will finally be ripe and maybe just maybe these guys will taste as sweet as these guys but these guys were picked a little bit early and that's the problem that you run into in commercial agriculture when you're having to buy things um, you know not at optimal ripeness I mean if I had fruit trees and one day I'll have all my own fruit trees I'll pick my mangoes only when they're optimally ripe uh, so right off the tree, but unfortunately we live in a society where we buy a lot of produce at the store or the produce terminal, right? And that's why the farmer's market's so good. But anyways, what I thought I'd do next for you guys is actually we're going to go ahead and take uh, one mango out of the non-organic mangoes and one mango out of the organic mangoes. I'm going to do a taste test, but also a bricks test and explain more to you about my opinions on conventional versus organic. All right, so now we're gonna have a mango off battle, right? We're gonna go ahead and take one organic panda mango that's really nice color compared to probably the ripest purity organic mango I could find. And are there, there's some of you guys that say, John, organic, it's always better. You should always buy organic. Never get the crap conventional. They can be sprayed with pesticides and all this stuff. And so while, yes, I will definitely agree that it's always better to buy organic, but I want you guys to think with your brains and not be like, organic's always better. 
because in some cases it is not always better. Maybe most of the time it is better because here's the thing that, you know, if you look at studies, you know, they have meta-analysis where they take a lot of studies and they spit out an answer from comparing all the data from a lot of studies, but sometimes you could pick the metadata to favor a certain way depending on who's paying for the study. <laughs> so the thing is this, how it, how it works out in my opinion and from what I know about gardening and farming and all this stuff. Basically, when you feed natural nutrients to the plants like compost and hopefully like rock dust, which unfortunately many commercial farmers don't use, um, the plants have more nutrition in the soil. They can basically make more nutrients because of the soil. When you have conventionally grown produce, generally they're using synthetic fertilizers that generally have a very limited uh, volume of different nutrients in the soil. So in general, the synthetically grown produce will have less nutrition unless, right, the organic even has the best soil was picked too early, then it, all the fully nutrition hasn't developed. And I bet nobody's ever really told you this before, right? The other thing is when you spray pesticides on the fruit, right, um, the plant says to itself, oh, I have no bugs. I don't really need to make any pesticides uh, within naturally occurring pesticides that, you know, the plant makes on its own. I mean, the mango is in related to like the um, poison oak family and all this kind of stuff. Um, and that's some of the toxins that it creates so that animals and things don't eat it. Um, but when you spray it, then the, 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 the plant doesn't need to make any of these uh, plant compounds or phytochemicals to defend itself from the bugs, right? But when you have organic and you're not spraying it with toxic pesticides and probably spray less organic pesticides, the plant's like, oh my God, I could get an invader, I could get a bug, I'm feeling aphids eating me. Then it actually needs to make some more phyto compound, phytonutrients or you know chemicals, plant chemicals that the plant makes on its own that's not sprayed on to defend itself against the bugs. And when we eat these phytochemicals, they are protective properties for us in many cases. In some cases they can be toxic, but if you're eating fruit that can be eaten raw, um, generally they're protective for us, right? And so for that reason, the organic fruit will generally be healthier for you guys to eat. Of course, there's exceptions too, so don't think, John always said this and it's always like this, right? That's generally true, but here's the thing, like some organic, some non-organic farmers, conventional farmers might not use synthetic fertilizers. They might have organic farming practices, but they just don't want to pay the money to be certified and or they spray chemical pesticides because it's easier. So it's kind of like a hybrid kind of thing. So, you know, and another factor besides conventional or organic is the ripeness, right? Which one would you guys pick, right? A nice ripe, um, you know, conventional or a smaller, well, that's us because it's count size, but a smaller not as ripe organic. Well, what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna do a taste test, one bite of each. I'm gonna show you guys the coloring on the inside. I definitely think that this is gonna be a lighter yellow, not really reach, dip deep and rich orange yellow color. And then I'm gonna use my digital bricks tester to show you guys the bricks value, to show you guys which one actually tastes better. And bricks could also show nutrition level, but uh, that's generally only in an analog unit. And this is a digital one, so I could show you guys actually the number. All right, so first let's go ahead and cut open the conventional one right here. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention about count size real fast, because some of you guys don't know about this, but on the side of the box, there's a count size. It could be 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. What that means is how many mangoes will fit in the box. If you have a 24 count mango, that means in this same size box, they fit 24 fruits in there, so the fruits are gonna be really small. Generally, but not always, smaller fruits don't ever develop as much. They're not as ripe. They're not going to be sweet. So generally, the, the larger the fruit, the better it is in general, but this is not always. Um, so always try to get like, you know, something like um, a lower count number. But if you guys just go to the store, you'll never know the count size. Sometimes the number, the produce code number on the fruit will denote its size. Sometimes it won't. I mean, avocados, they have different numbers like a, a for a smaller avocado than a larger one. So I want you guys to pay attention to this, um, but of course the, the coloring and of course if, you're, if it yields the pressure, a good sign anyways for a mango if they're truly ripe. Anyways, I was gonna go ahead and cut this guy open. Let's go ahead and do that here. Cut it right down the middle, right down the seed. Oh man, look at that. This is really nice color in here. Um, maybe this could start to even be fermenting in the middle. But I think it's right before that, really nice smell right there. We'll put that out. Now we're going to go ahead and cut the uh, organic one right down the middle. And we're going to look at that and look at that, right? 
Can you guys see the color difference? We'll hold that up close to you guys, right? That one's really nice and orange there, and this one's actually a little bit more yellow. has some of that like weird, funny, stringing stuff in the middle of the core. Um, that's edible. Don't be alarmed. Uh, but what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and... I'm going to try it, actually. So let's see. We're going to go ahead and cut this in half once, cut it in half again. And then basically how I like to cut it, I like to have a piece, and then I basically just take the knife and like fillet my mango so all the skin is left on the cutting board, and I have just... The fruit I'm going to eat, so we're going to go ahead and bite. Mmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's a definitely a decent mango. I like these manila mangoes more than the standard mangoes because they don't have the strings in there that get stuck in your teeth. Also, they have a unique flavor. Like, to me, they kind of taste like a, a vanilla-y and not so super, like, fruity, right? And I kind of like this. But to taste that one, honestly, it had a good flavor, but it wasn't super sweet, wasn't super delicious. It's just like, all right, well, this is a mango. It's acceptable. Next, let's go ahead and uh, cut open uh, this non-organic one. And uh, for my subjective uh, taste test here, once again, I put it on its side and basically take my knife and just uh, run it against the uh, cutting board right above where the skin is. So I can get all the skin off, get all the fruit on. Oops, and we're going to fall off there. Let me go ahead and take a bite of this guy. Oh, got some skin there. Mmm. Wow, interesting. So this one to me, although it's more full color, it's actually maybe a tad bit sweeter, but not much because it actually is a lot more watery. <laughs> so this one's more dry, this one's more watery. Um, you know, they're both decent mangoes. I don't know really which one is better, like to say subjectively, like that one's sweeter, this one's not. It, they're, they're both pretty good mangoes, and they're like both fairly mediocre. They're not like, oh, super good. But let's see what the uh, bricks tester says. So we got the bricks on, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, take some of this mango here, and we're going to go ahead and squeeze out uh, some of the juice on the little tester here. One, two, three. We're going to hit the read button. Make sure we're on the bricks there. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh wow, that's pretty impressive. All right, so I hope you guys can see that, but basically it's a 18.6 is the bricks test on that mango. And I think that's, uh, for mangoes, I think that's a fairly high number. I don't have my uh, chart here to tell me. Let's go ahead and turn it off, turn it on, get that reset here. And uh, let's go ahead and take uh, some of the uh, organic mango, once again, uh, same test, squeeze out some juice, a little bit harder to extract the juice out of this one, it's a lot more dry as I said, one, oh, really squeezing this hard, barely any juice coming out, two, three, all right, got some juice there, read, reading it, oh man, check this out, that's fucking, oops, oh, sorry, it's crazy, this one's 20.1, so technically, although my mouth could not detect the difference, right, um, the organic ones, even though they're not as ripe, <laughs> We're better than the conventional ones that I thought were going to be better. <laughs> so you guys are thinking, John, always buy organic, man. It's always better. Well, not always. If these guys were less ripe, they might not be as good. But generally, I mean, this basically just goes to prove my point. You know, get the most ripest you guys can and the most organic as possible. But, of course, if they have non-ripe green organic mangoes and they have or non-organic ripe mangoes, choose these but these guys are, are pretty close in terms and when they're close like this <laughs> in this case anyways the organics were better and so anyways what i think i'm going to do now is i'm going to eat a meal of mangoes because <laughs> i'm super hungry i uh, hope you guys enjoy this episode learning some of my tidbits about uh, fruits and vegetables and how i'm going to use them and also the prices i got if you guys want to learn how to shop the la wholesale produce store yourself be sure to check the links down below in the description. I have videos on how to shop the produce terminal, even if you've never went, went, went before. It does not have to be intimidating. I do encourage you guys to go to the, the old school market, the Mexican market, because basically it's just like a big farmer's market. You drive in, you park in the middle. It's kind of a pain to find parking. Park in the middle, then you just walk around the whole thing. I encourage you guys to walk around first and see what they have everywhere before you start buying stuff unless they have like, unless they have like some berries or something you think they're going to sell out of really fast, then buy that. 
uh, now and then ask questions later and that's how I ended up with uh, two different kinds of berries because I saw some that were good now and they had four cases I bought them all and then I saw some other ones for even cheaper so actually a lot of the cheaper ones were wash dry and then we're gonna freeze a bunch so I'll have a lot of good or organic blueberries for this hot summer season so uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. That'll encourage me to do more haul videos like this format, sharing my tidbits and knowledge that I've learned over the years about fruits and vegetables. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else that, you, that lives in the LA area that doesn't shop the Wholesale Produce Channel, so hopefully they could be inspired on how such the good deals they could get. But more than just good deals is finding fruits and vegetables that they might not normally uh, be buying because there are more varieties there. Uh, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes. I've coming out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time teach you guys all aspects and how you guys can incorporate more fresh fruits and vegetables in your diet because they are literally the healthiest foods on the planet uh, based on my research and my opinions. Uh, so with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're always the best.